Hello, hello, and happy new year, everybody. I uh, hope you've had a great start to the year. <clears throat> I know I have. I had a great holiday. Um, not so much luck with this lately. We actually just uh, recorded an episode earlier, and uh, it got deleted. And unfortunately, that means it's just going to be me uh, doing the second episode as well. But, you know, we'll, 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 we'll get Ian in on this podcast eventually, successfully. Hopefully, we've got Audacity figured out, and we're good to go. Oh, man. So what great games have come out this month? Well, I mean, I guess you got to talk about Smash first, right? That's got like between 71 and uh, something like 75 characters. It's looking wonderful. I've got I've unlocked everything so far. I know my roommates also got it and he's been playing it. Um, He's had less free time, actually. But um, I will say it was a bitch to unlock everything. I mean, it took quite a while, and I was kind of cheesing it. I wasn't doing it the proper way, like using the the, the story. It's, it's a very cool, uh, kind of unique take on Smash in that they have like a story mode, your standard Smash mode, and then you even have almost like a version of the classic mode that you would get from the 64 or like the, um, what was it? It was the uh, GameCube version, I guess. Um but where you like where you fight Master Hand and, or, and all that at the end. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's a really good game. Um, it's it's one of those games where you definitely want to have you know friends coming around and playing, and kind of enjoying all of that together. I think um, it's definitely one of those games uh, built for that. It's almost like a Mario Party, uh, I guess a Super Mario um, Brothers in a way, or like a, a Mario Kart. Uh, definitely more that vein. Um, I mean, that's what I've used it for the most part for since I've unlocked everybody. And, you know, full disclosure, I suck at this game. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, what's, you know, gotta ask whoever's listening, what's your main? I know I'm right now, I'm rocking, um, Little Mac, and then I'm also, like, close second in Cloud. Though Cloud's been nerfed a little bit, I feel like. I mean, I'm not an aficionado on him specifically as a character, but, like, I feel like compared to the Wii, he his hitbox or the the whatever the last one was on, you can correct me, but uh the, his hitbox is kind of smaller. Like he he has less reach. Um but still love playing as him. I mean, he's he's just a fun character and of course, you know, you got to do the Advent Children skin because he you know, it's just such a good movie. Oh. <coughs> but oh, oh geez, what else have I been playing this month? I'm um, looking at it right now. Oh, yeah. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, man, that is a, um, it's a good game. Uh, I did get kind of bored with it, I'm not going to lie to you, like, there was definitely a point where I kind of felt, I don't know, like, I was getting stuck in that, that, that Assassin's Creed grind cycle, and I, I wasn't enjoying it as much as I did with games like Black Flag, even though they did import the ship system, which I very much appreciated, um, but I don't know. I just didn't fall in love with it the same way as I did the other one. I mean, the combat's great. The storytelling is cool. Uh, the way that the characters kind of evolve, um, at least so far as I got, was really cool. Uh, just a fun game overall. They definitely take more of like an RPG action stance um, in this title, which isn't, it's not bad. I mean, you can still do all the stealth stuff, but uh, y- it's definitely more action heavy than some of the other games. I mean, there have definitely been more games where you can be more action forward. I'm thinking of the British one with the uh, the boy and the girl. That was pretty cool, where you could kind of choose between being a bruiser or more stealthy between, you know, the guy was more of a bruiser and the girl was more stealthy. I can't really remember their names. But um, you kind of get that aspect with your character, um, which I really appreciate, but it's it's much more polished. Uh, but that said, it, it it does have the typical Assassin's Creed grind loop and, you know, Ubisoft, they just pump them out. Um, it's just like an Assassin's Creed game, an Assassin's Creed game, an Assassin's Creed game. Uh, so, you know, obviously there's going to be a little bit of a, like a monotony to how they feel. But it's still, you know, it's a polished AAA title. It's enjoyable. If you And, and since I skipped the last one, the, the Egyptian one, I kind of did get a little bit of a break. So I can't complain too much. Um, but that said, I did kind of get bored. And that moved me on to playing a lot more Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption 2, whatever. Um, And I'm going to have a real unpopular opinion here, uh, but you know how, like, the Game Awards were recently and God of War won, uh, and, the you know, all of the gaming community is having their respective opinions and feuds and all that shit. Um, I kind of think it deserved to win, um, so solely on the merit of, like, the narrative and how focused that narrative was versus 
Red Dead Redemption, which does have a very good story and a very good narrative that kind of it almost almost fans out and then comes back and ties itself together at the end in that midsection, um, which this is kind of where it differentiates itself from from God of War. It seems a little thin because you're focused more on a camp than you are on just Kratos and his son. And while you do have a lot of like really profound moments while you're playing Red Dead Redemption, uh, you I don't think, or and this is just an opinion, but I don't think it's as easy to to tell a really focused, impactful story with a plethora of characters versus again just Kratos and his son. Now that being said, I mean the gameplay is similar but different. You know, it's guns versus kind of a fantasy scape. Uh, that's, you know, player's choice. I think they're both wonderful in that respect. It just depends on what you're feeling. You know, do you want to shoot stuff or do you want to throw an axe at stuff or swing Kratos' blades around or whatever? Um, in, in terms of pure beauty, oh my goodness, Red Dead Redemption takes the cake. It's ridiculous, right? I mean, they, they rendered out scenes for things that barely even matter. You, you barely ever even go into a menu unless you're saving. It is... It's absolutely beautiful. And and while God of War is a sight to behold uh, with its like m- megalithic monsters and, and, and all, of, all of what it has going on, Red Dead Redemption, is, the attention to detail is just far greater. I mean, you can, you can see the hairs growing on your character's face. That is a ridiculous level of detail. So it, it takes the cake in terms of beauty, but when you're looking at like a game which... Uh, I don't know, this is debatable, but when you're looking at a game which a a first-person campaign kind of tells a story, I think God of War took the cake, and I think that's why they gave it to him. Now, you know, you can fight me about it in the comments or whatever. I'm not, you know, but it's they're both beautiful games. I would buy both of them a million times over and play them again. Um, But it's, you know, it was just just God of War took the cake this time, and I, I think they really did deserve it because that... Man, that end and and the way that story was told, man, it, it really had me like out my seat at, at at the very end. It was it was a really good one. Um, that being said, Red Dead Redemption is a lot longer, so you're gonna get a lot more enjoyable like time at a Red Dead versus your God of War because you could probably beat God of War. I mean, I enjoyed it and kind of explored and all that, but if you were real good and just kind of like focused on the storyline, you might be able to 8 to 10 hours that. I, I could see it being done. I mean, not speed running or anything like that, but just solid playing just for the story. You could probably do it. Um, whereas I don't even think you could beat Red Dead in under 40. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't finished the game. I just happen to know how it ends. But it it's a long, long campaign. And, and, and in, in that respect, it does kind of get some bonus points, doesn't it? I don't know. They're, they're both really wonderful, so it's a tough call, you know. Uh, but I did have to take a break because of how long Red Dead is, and I'm kind of, you know, spacing it out. <laughs> uh, I went out, oh yeah, I went out and picked out Divinity. So uh, I talked a little bit last time on uh, on how I kind of like, I like D&D, and I was talking about Critical Role. And Divinity is, you know, it's essentially like, it's Dungeons and Dragons, but it's on, it's on, it's a game, Yeah. And you can just kind of, it's got a, a bunch of races. You can make your own. You can use the ones that they pre-create. And it's got a kind of a cool storyline. Um, I will say if you're looking for like a purely action experience, might not be your best bet. Like you might want to go with either Red Dead or God of War. Or like, a, you know, even maybe like a Call of Duty depending on what you want. But um, this game, it's more tactics I'd say. Like if you imagine XCOM had like a love child with your like like diablo fair kind of rpg that would be this game so you can kind of like make a character and create them and mold them using their stats and then they also get a team of four that when you get into combat or or various situations you almost enter like a turn by turn system that allows you to like make decisions for each character and then the enemy characters make decisions it's it's a really fun time i will say it's it's slower than any of the other games I've been playing. So it's kind of one of those things where you just kick back and read a lot of the text and listen to the narrator and kind of try to get involved in the story as it's progressing Um, because otherwise you're going to get bored real quick. It's definitely something you got to be into, and it's heavy, heavy in the fantasy kind of realm. So uh, maybe if you're going from God of War and you need to slow down, that might be a real good like side game to have. But I will say it can very much be an acquired taste, like just because of the setting and the slowness and and kind of the 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 way it 
assumes that you're used to kind of all of what it has going on, um, it might you know it might scare somebody off. I know the the initial game Divinity Original scared me off a little bit initially, and then I, I as I kind of read about it and learned how to make the characters, I I got way more engrossed in the world, and it became a much more enjoyable experience. That's for sure. So, uh, yeah, man, so I was researching Fallout, and I, you know, I said I was going to kind of stay away from Bethesda stuff, because I'm not playing that game, it's, it's just, you know, I enjoyed it at first, and I tried to give it a solid chance, and I almost feel like an idiot for that, because now, it, it's just, it's, it's filth, it's not a very enjoyable game at all, I mean, you can get on and you can play, I, I haven't in forever, but you can, and so I got curious, you know, I was listening to that whole controversy with Nuka-Cola Dark, which is like, a rum that they made and it, the the bottle was shoddy and some people feel as though it was false advertised and you know yada 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 kind of similar to the thing with the canvas bags but um but i decided to check their stocks you know just you know i'm not a big stock guy but i, I was kind of curious and they dropped like 30 points in the past six months and i was so surprised and <laughs> Funny enough, when when I saw that, I, I got even more curious because you could say that Bethesda might be showing signs of EA syndrome, you know, uh, but uh, I decided to go check EA and in six months they dropped half. It was, oh, it was ugly. And, you know, that's not a good trend to see in AAA titles or AAA publishers, creators, what have you. Because, you know, the industry kind of does center itself around them. I mean, I know indie developers are going to make indie games. I, I love making games. Uh, it's difficult as all get out. I've only made the one. We'll talk about that later. But, like, it, 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 it's, it's, I'm going to make it anyway. But the, the AAA titles, they really do set trends in the market. And that can affect, that can trickle down and affect everybody. So it is kind of always disheartening to see it such a huge trusted name make so many mistakes in succession after publishing such a just garbage game i mean it just really didn't turn out i, I as i'm saying that i'm i'm regretting ever being like yeah well you got to give it a chance you know uh well uh, i mean that's some that's a, the only fallout update hopefully that you'll be getting from me again cuz i i am i am unless you know maybe they'll fix it maybe it'll be like uh no man's sky where a year down the line, I'm addicted to it because I, I you know, they've changed everything, and and now it's basically, I don't know, Fallout Four, or Fallout Five with uh, MMO bits. But who knows? I mean, especially with Red Dead Online coming out, they might have just fuck, fuck, like fucking kneecapped it, you know? <laughs> That's an apt metaphor, right? Just ride up with the with the uh, horse and boom. Oh goodness. Okay, maybe that was a bit dark. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's, I think that's the majority of the games I've been playing. I mean, I know I was addicted to, to Caravan Heart, uh, that Dragon Quest game for a while, but I've kind of taken a break just because, I don't know, I've, I've been enjoying other games. I've been picking up some stuff just to have some fun. I actually, I picked up, uh, Dragon's Dogma. That's an older one for the PS4, but it's a classic, you know, and it's got a good, it's got an excellent character creation mechanic. Like, think Dragon Age Inquisition with a little bit more uh, options, but a little bit less polish. Um, it's a really fun game. Good action game. I mean, the class system's a little limited. Again, it's one of the earlier PS4 games, but man, is it fun. Plus, any game where you, like, start the game and a dragon basically takes your heart is a good game. You know? <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, uh, it's been it's been a lot of working. I've been doing a lot of work on my uh, my various projects. You know, uh, any of any of the people that are listening, you know, obviously follow the Instagram. It's Oni Games. Same thing as the the channel name. Um, but I finished my first Checkers game. Well, finished tentatively. I got to work on the menu a little more. It's done. It's just not pretty. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's I I gotta say, man, programming that game um was a trial i did a lot of it with the help of a uh there's a youtube video i'll definitely link to it once the actual the actual thing is put up uh, all the assets are mine i made everything myself but i did use a lot of his code with like very subtle minor changes um namely just is black was one thing that i ended up using um because he kind of denotes between white and black in in a way that for some reason it wasn't working for me so i, I kind of had to change it but other than that there haven't been a lot of changes to his code uh, other than adding an actual menu screen because um, I didn't want to build a server. You, you'd understand if you watch the video. But anyway, 
that gave me a whole new respect, you know, for for building games, and really inspired me to uh, to purchase a couple of courses and, and and get on my Unity and C Sharp grind. So hopefully, well, you'll definitely see a website in the next couple of months. Like that, I can I can promise it'll be a Wix because the domain names uh, for my name are very expensive. But uh, but uh, y the the Wix will probably show you all the um, all the things that you need. And then um, and ways to download them and all that. It'll also have all the sources and all that. Um, and then hopefully in the near future you'll have even more games to download. I'm hoping to use that that website kind of as a means to 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 get out the free assets and free games and stuff and or uh, access to the games that I'm making. So you know, future goals, right? But uh, yeah, um, I think that's it for this for this monthly episode. I don't know this monthly podcast, but I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of the month and I will see you in February.